with future uh, big data systems? What are the systems challenges there? So one cool thing, like in, in everything in computing, you know, um, a lot has uh, changed uh, since uh, since 2010 when we started the AMP Lab, and um, you know, a lot of the trends in hardware, as Dave has pointed out so many times, then directly affect software and even applications, um, you know, after a few years. So basically, when we started, uh, when at least our group started looking at big data, we were in uh, in a world like this where you had servers with mostly hard disks, and uh, you had pretty slow networks, around one gigabit per second, pretty slow compared to the speed of the processors on those servers. And so the name of the game was to minimize I.O. and minimize network communication, maximize data locality, and that's how you got high performance for big data. That's, that's kind of everything we did. Now, if you look a few years later, in 2016, um, storage has gotten a lot faster. You can have SSDs uh, that are increasingly becoming a common way to store that. Networks have gotten at least 10 times faster in the most commonly deployed ones uh, in data centers. They're also now usually full by section bandwidth. And CPUs, unfortunately, are still roughly um, you know, the same speed. Um, so basically, these two things improved by a factor of 10. CPUs didn't. Um, so one interesting thing that we're seeing happen is that actually CPU, uh, which you know, wasn't really optimized for much in the early systems, uh, is now the bottleneck uh, in systems like Hadoop, Spark, and a whole bunch of other big data systems. Um, so that's you know, kind of an interesting thing. That means you have to bring out uh, you know, techniques both from software, maybe, maybe also from architecture, to make good systems for, um, for these kind of problems. And these trends are likely to continue. On the storage side, there's a lot happening that will give you uh, pretty big, fast storage. Things like SSD prices falling. Um, uh, it's projected that they will soon fall below hard disks if you include the total cost of sort of um, uh, managing and, and, and powering them. Um, also, non-volatile uh, memories, such as 3D Crosspoint. And Ethernet continues to improve very quickly, so pretty soon we'll have a, another 10 times speed up in, in Ethernet very widely deployed. So I think the result of this on, on the system side is two things. Uh, big data engines will need to be compute optimized. Uh, this is pretty hard, uh, given that a lot of the, the current systems use pretty high level kind of uh, uh, languages and interfaces, things like Java or Python. Uh, but it means that you, you can really get a significant speed up by optimizing these for the CPU. And also we'll need new uh, storage systems and maybe even new compute systems that take advantage of the new storage hierarchy. Um, and we're starting to see um, a few examples uh, like this in the open source world. So just two examples I'm, I'm aware of. Uh, one is in Spark. A lot of the work lately has been actually on optimizing CPU efficiency. Uh, there's this thing called Project Tungsten, which tries to generate code at runtime. Right now it's Java code, but eventually it will probably be native code uh, from SQL and from the other APIs. So this is now the most important thing. And the other thing is in uh, storage systems. So Aluxio, which started out as Tachyon uh, in the AMP Lab, is an example of a storage layer that uh, just optimizes for caching and DRAM and flash, because 99% you know, of the data you access can probably fit uh, in these faster storage media. Um, and these don't look you know, like, the, like the systems that were there uh, even five years ago. So that, these are, I think, kind of the biggest changes in systems.